happy to introduce to you our uh, esteemed colleague from uh, WHO, uh, Yongjae Yon, who is vice president of the UFA Health Health Aging setting. So there's another section, sorry, section, which is another section involved in this uh, organizing of this uh, week. And uh, Young Ye, you are also a technical officer uh, at the WHO Regional Office for Europe in Copenhagen and leading the aging and health program. And you will speak about achieving healthy longevity for all in age friendly environments. So floor is yours. Thank you so much, Hoft, and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, dear friends and colleagues. It's so nice to be here, and on behalf of our regional director, Dr. Hans Kluger from WHO Europe, we're so pleased to have this opportunity to participate in this very important webinar on health uh, through the life course and really breaking down silos. And I think what Evita mentioned earlier, you know, the great words of, of uh, Aristotle, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And it's so important that we're coming together, thinking about this topic, breaking down silo, silos, and really achieving this sustainable development goal of leaving no one behind. And so I'm very pleased um, to speak about our work on healthy aging, because living longer is a great thing. And this is all of our goal. But in addition to that, we want to live long and healthy lives. So let me please uh, share my screen and you should be able to see it now. Yes, great. Yes, fine. It, thank you so much. So um, my QR code is there, feel free to uh, come, be, be in touch with me. So I think we all know that our population is aging rapidly and we will continue to see a population aging, particularly with the oldest old uh, populations of the 80 plus. But of course, within the WHO European region, which consists of 53 member states, we have one of the highest uh, share of older persons in the world. And we also stand at a historic brink and historic shift that this year we have more older persons than younger persons living in Europe. And so there is no doubt that we are living longer than ever before. And this really is the testament of our public health system. And longer life brings with it many, many opportunities for all of us because we are aging. And it also brings opportunities for our families and societies. But the extent to which, to which we can uh, use these opportunities and co contribute to our communities really depend on a very important factor, and that is health. And so we've been very successful in extending life, but these extra years are not necessarily spent in good health. And so this graph may look slightly complicated, but the message is very, very clear. You see that this is the, uh, the graph of life expectancy and healthy life expectancy at birth and at age 60. And looking at the 20 year sort of a trend, we're seeing that life expectancy has increased but at the same time, there's also increase in the number of years spent in ill health, and this gap is widening at age 60. And we also see this gender gap as well. So this trend is clearly the opposite of what we would like to see. And that is why promoting healthy aging is so important to reverse this trend. So the UN Decade of Healthy Aging is an opportunity for all of us as government, civil society, UN agencies, academias, media, public, public sectors, and private sectors to reverse these trends. And so we have developed a number of resources. So please feel free to scan the QR code and we will make our presentations available to have access to all the materials in multiple languages. So one of the action areas of the Decade of Healthy Aging is creating age-friendly environment. And age-friendly environment is context-specific. You can create that at the city and community level. You can create that at a subnational or national level, or you can create it at a setting specific like public library or age-friendly train stations or age-friendly hospitals. And I'll give some examples. Essentially, it is an ecosystem in which you can bring different sectors and people together. It allows us to age in place. It gives us the opportunity for our personal development throughout our aging process. It allows us to continuously learn and grow and foster independent living and good health. 
So age-friendly environment is a proven way to create an age-friendly cities and communities. And we work across the different domains, the domains such as outdoor spaces, transportations, housing, social participations, looking at community services, looking at communications, how we bring people together. And it really signified this profound commitment to address the evolving needs uh, of, of people in our communities. And so there are some examples that I would like to share. And I think earlier, DDA mentions about creating the conditions for collaborations and age-friendly environment. This model of age-friendly environment is uh, a way in which we can bring sectors together by putting people at the center. So one example is the city of Udine, which is one of the age-friendly cities. And they leverage the GIS technologies using technologies to create precise health map that align public services, including health and social care services with the needs of older people. And they involve older persons in the decision-making process and ensuring that all of the local investments are aligned with age-friendly practices. And there are many other cities and communities that are also implementing various programs like ex as simple as extending traffic light timing. This allow people to go out in the streets and engage in the communities and to actually also promote physical activities. Because did you know that just 20 minutes of light physical activities a day can reduce 30% uh, of uh, all cause mortalities? And it really promote intergenerations uh, uh, collaborations and activities as well. I'm also happy to share with you one of these age-friendly cities is the city of Gaia in Poland. It's an, another example of uh, how they bring um, communities together. And they, they are one of the first cities in Poland to be part of the UNESCO World Network of Learning Cities. And it is the ecosystem of an age-friendly environment that bring people together. For example, the seniors activity centers, the public libraries, that dedicated services to, of course, all people, but also older persons, creating virtual platforms, online classes, in addition to the in-person uh, classes. Older persons learn to be connected, to be engaged, to be empowered, to pursue, pursue lifelong learning. And this is done even during the COVID pandemic, when this is all done virtually. Another example, at a national level is uh, Age-Friendly Ireland, where they're very much focusing on the housing part of the age-friendly environment, where they promote independent living to enable people to live as long as possible in their own communities. And the research and the evaluations have shown that it actually shows that it delay people from going to uh, nursing homes and long-term care facilities. And what this was pilot tested in nine local authorities and has since then been implemented national wide where it shows that it is cost saving to the couples of older couples of about 90,000 per year. And it, it shows that this initiative not only reduced the healthcare costs, but it enhanced the quality of life of older persons. So I'm going to start in, in a couple of slides about our age-friendly cities and communities, our global network, which span across 52 countries in more than 1,600 cities around the world. And um, of course, we have our national network, our sub-national networks that we can engage with them. And this cover about 320 million people worldwide. And so a lot is happening across cities and communities. And you can scan the QR code you can go to our database and you can search what kind of activities they've done in terms of learning, in terms of health promotions, in terms of addressing social isolations and loneliness. And you have a lot of examples and contact information from what cities are doing. And so I welcome you to join the WHO family of age family cities and communities with all of our resources. And this really is the ecosystem in which we can implement health promotions Preventions and health literacy. So, thank you so much for your attention.